and welcome back. Um, this time I'm going to do a bit more work on the um, indicator holder and um, I've machined this piece of 10mm cold rolled down to 6mm and now I'm going to try and mount it on the rotary table and cut the two arcs and put the two holes through. Now I think the first step is probably to to mark this up roughly just so that I can get it in a rough idea of where it needs to be and then I can put some holes through that are on these on these lines where the T slots are as far away as I can get them so that I can make clearance for my end mill um, these radius lines are 25 and 35 millimeters or about an inch and an inch and three eighths I'm gonna use probably a six mil or an eight mil end mill so I'll add six or eight mil to either side um, so it's quarter inch or, or uh, five sixteenths and just hopefully draw some lines based on a approximate centre point and that will give me like a region where I can safely put a clamp here and a couple of bolts here. Order of operations, I probably probably work on the inside first and get rid of this waste piece. Um, either that or put the two holes in. To get the two holes in, um, this is about 150.33 degrees. Um, there's a bit of, I've got one with more marking, more stuff marked up on it, and I've got my, my offsets, so 29 along and 7.68 up. So with those I'll use, I'll probably centre this on the DRO, move along, and move up, poke a hole, move along, move up, poke a hole, get back to the centre, and then I'll cut the inner radius out, remove the clamp, remove the waste, and cut the outer radius out and that should release the workpiece. Um, I don't have a 5mm reamer. I may treat a, an end mill kind of like a boring tool. I may use it in the drill chuck and poke it through. That's probably my most accurate way of getting an on center, on axis, on size hole. That's the plan, but as always, it's subject to change. And uh, yeah, these rusty temporary toe clamps. I really need to make a, a good set like I did. Aid's Workshop um, is a great channel if you haven't seen it. He's, um, he's just made a tool and plate, toe clamps, um, studs, T-nuts, all that kind of stuff. And it makes me think I'd like one of those for this rotary table. Something I can use as a consumable and drill and tap. That'd be very handy for this kind of project. Anyway, let's get this uh, marked up and clamped onto the table. And then we'll cut some metal. All right, well I've got the uh, workpiece eyeballed center on here, eyeballed parallel to the table here, and um, clamped down to the T-bolts, T-nuts. Um, going to lock off my rotation. Um, I'm going to use the DRO to step off my, my distances. So. Well, I milled most of that inner arc and failed to record most of it. I've got the soundtrack, but uh, after moving the table up, the camera point, camera focus changed. Um, yeah, it, it, I did that in two passes, and I'm nearly through. What I might do is just leave a centerpiece attached, just so that I've got two point hold on to this um, onto this inner piece. Nothing's getting too hot. I'm using as much oil as I can remember to put on. So yeah, I'll mill, I'll mill nearly to the middle, then I'll pick it up and uh, finish the cut. Yeah, that's worked nicely.
Next step is to remove this clamp and the waste piece. So if I spin that round, you'll see a little bit better what I was trying to do. Just trying to leave just a little wafer there, just to stop this thing spinning around. Um, but I got unlucky and went through the whole depth, but I was lucky because the bit didn't, the uh, waste piece didn't, um, didn't go anywhere. It was fine. So next is to do a similar thing for the outside um, radius. In fact, next is to measure this and correct this inside and uh, take the remaining stuff as a remaining material as a climb cut. I can't really get my telescoping gauges to work properly in here without a bit more length of bore. So um, I set my calipers to 50 and it looks like they just go in with no play. So I think I think it's on size. So I was going to do a, a clean up cut on here and I don't think I will. I think I'll just um, clean that surface by hand with some wet and dry paper or, or something. Okay, to get my 35 radius, I need to offset my x-axis to 39. So, let's do that. Okay, that's the first half depth pass. Um, I don't think I'm supposed to be getting golden chips off an HSS cutter, so I might go a bit, a bit easy. Um, I'll just give that a few minutes to cool down. Well, that was interesting. That's pretty warm. There's a foil thick layer of uh, steel holding it on for two thirds of its width, but I didn't think about it acting as a hinge. Um, and the wood stopped burning now, so moderate success. <laughs> I'm pretty sure those are going to be oversized, but um, and uh, I'd left on there. I'd left. 0.25 millimeters. That was just eyeballed. That's not enough. Obviously, you need you need more than that. It's like foil. So this needs some cleaning up now. So with a bit of a chamfer on it. Still a bit there to do, but that's on the corner. Not too bad. So I'm about 
about 14 hundredths under size on diameter, 18 hundredths. Nine hundredths over size on ID, well, depending on where you measure. Point one over size there. It's supposed to be ten all the way around. Let's take off more than I wanted in some places because of the. Um, tooling marks from the mill. I'll have to get used to using that. That's supposed to be six. That's not too bad. Still got the rotary table centered about the spindle and zeroed on the DRO. And I used a center drill, which I know is tapered. Um, whilst this was floating around, I just used a center drill to center that. And then I found a position where I could clamp my arm piece in two places and I'm pretty confident that will be okay I'll go go easy I'll use the same 8 mil 4 flute end mill and we'll see what happens Hopefully you can see that. That looks looks pretty good. I've actually left it a tenth oversized because I thought I'd leave a little bit of material this time for for hand finishing. I think the um, the problem with the finish on the earlier parts was because it's trapped in a slot. It's it's recutting the same chips all the time, and you end up with um, the chips flexing the cut around, and then it sort of overcuts that kind of thing. So, but when it's on the outside of a part like this. It's um, it's able to get rid of all the chips and throw them around. So yeah, that's come out quite nice. Pretty happy with that. I'll do the other one off camera. I've had to stop slightly short on that one because I'm I'm tangent on this side, and I've got a fairly crisp shoulder on this side and that means my hole is not centered in my 10 millimeter thickness um, so I'm going to blend this I'm going to blend this corner by hand I'm not going to go any further um, I don't think it will be noticeable in the end but it's a little bit disappointing I wanted to try and make this really accurately but anyway I think it will still be a nice job it just won't be won't pass any uh, tolerance tests <laughs> anyway I'll see you back at the um, metal workbench well this is almost the finished part if you if you look there's a there's a bit of an aris there that I'd like to clean up I think there's one on this there's a little indentation there where it's just slightly off center the radius and then on the other side there's an aris and all I've done is knock this edge off, um, this edge here. So I'm going to I'm going to just blend those in. And this is a Watson all documentary, so you see the mistakes or inaccuracies as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll just blend those in and hopefully and see what I'm trying to achieve. Well, that's the uh, first pass of the arm done, I reckon. So I'm just trying to hold this in focus. Got rid of the sort of azaruses and the damage, and the curves look fairly natural. Um, that's the face that I hit with wet and dry and that's the one straight off the mill that's the um, draw filed and wet and dried edge 
can see on the reflection there's something there that needs to be uh, looked at again, but that's fine. I'll work on that later. It's now functional. What I'll do is I'll go back to everything at the end and give everything a good um, proper proper look over and finish. But yeah, that's that's the first piece anyway. That's the arm. I guess I'll do the pins next. And they're going to be, as as with the drawing, except I'm going to make two changes. One is that the diameter is going to suit these holes that we've accidentally made oversize. And the other thing is I'm going to increase the length by the radius, which is 2.5mm, and put a hemisphere dome on the end of the screw, because I quite like that feature on on handmade stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time with the uh, the video for the swivel pins. Cheers.